No one can say where that line really is, but everyone has the ability to feel it if they want to. Is One Piece popular enough to add a reference to it in a not related fighting game video? Let's just do it. Do you remember the fight between Rora Norizuro and Dracul Mihawk in the Barity arc? The one in the fifth episode of the Netflix live action series. The core is that a prominent swordmaster meets a skilled but arrogant rookie and clearly taunts him with disrespect. Mihawk fights with a tiny sword in the beginning, but Zoro demonstrates a promise for growth and the master keeps his victim alive while still bringing taunting toxicity but with well-earned respect to motivate the guy to train more and defeat him in the future. This interaction kind of reflects a healthy approach of fighting games competitors to their opponents. If you win, you don't morally destroy the opponent, especially if the skill difference is substantial. And if you lose, it's hard to be toxic in this situation, but still possible. It's nice not to diminish the opponent's success. How do we do this toxic or respectful thing in an environment where direct communication is most often minimized to in-game taunts and a set of emoji pics? That's actually quite enough to bring the personal fighting to online multiplayer. The developers naturally don't want to let some weirdos abuse communication in their games, so interactions between players happen mainly on two basic layers. You can activate taunts during fights, or you can send a short message or image after the match. Taunts are really cool, as you have to be very careful with them. Even beginners know that this thing is punishable, and no one wants to get punched right in the middle of their moment of glory. Most games have taunts, but they make them sort of tricky to execute. For Street Fighter VI, it's all six normals pressed at once, standing or with forward or backward directional input. No modern control system helps with this, but button mapping can. In Skullgirls, it's character-specific sequences of directional and attack buttons, something extra to remember during your training sessions. Similar stuff you'll find in Tekken 2, so check out the move list for your character. The input is the least difficult thing with such taunts. If you know how to activate them without being punished, you probably have a right to do this. Only rare games, like Brawlhalla and other platform fighters, give players a safe period for taunting while their opponent is respawning after a lost stock. Otherwise, you risk missing your Oki options or just getting stupidly punished by being unnecessarily cocky. Those after-match emojis and stickers are safe to execute, sure the fight is over, and therefore they may bring a special level of toxicity. What about messaging too easy with a smirking face or just a thumbs down to a defeated opponent? The game gives a good variety of such options. Dragon Ball Fighter Z has a separate selection of stickers and pre-made messages with the opportunity to combine them in any tricky way you could imagine. Guilty Gear Strive has a bit of a different system, where you activate some actions for your avatar after leaving those fighting cabinets. Showing your opponent how sleepy and bored you are, or just laughing in their face, certainly adds some toxicity to the interactions. Beyond these options, you may want to customize your player card and try to affect your opponent through it even before a match starts. Many games allow this. In Undernight Inbirth, those lines can be made from many unlockable words to describe your eternal glory and miraculous powers. Nothing is wrong with using these tools in any way you want. They are here and they are part of the experience. But quite often, sitting in the coziness of our gaming room, we forget that there is a real person on the other side of online matchmaking. And this person certainly has feelings too. We were all there at one point. You don't want to ruin your silly little rank achievements and head to casuals to warm up, train, or simply have fun. And then, after a couple of painful moments, you sit over there trying to process what just happened. And on top of that, the person gives you a thumbs down, too easy, or any other disrespectful thing they have in this specific game. That person probably met a noob in comparison to their level. But do you remember the approach of Mihawk and his fight against Zoro? There is a degree where you give strong motivation to train more, but there is also a degree where you destroy every sparkle of hope and even interest. No one can say where that line really is, but everyone has the ability to feel it if they want to. How bad this effect is depends on the person, and you never know who you're dealing with, if it is you who takes the role of that destructive master. Some victims grow stronger thanks to any level of salty toxicity, 
Someone is broken right after a tiny little grain. We are not playing the role of morality supervisors here. It might be too tempting to celebrate your victory in such a way, and especially when the skill difference is not that significant and you feel an emotional explosion after earning the win. Also, let's not forget how practically important the taunting and emoji feature can be. Say we start even with that message on your player card, Fighting Overlord, Destructor of Souls. Some opponents would get doubts about their chances, so the crack is already there and you have delivered your first hit. And then you arrogantly taunt an opponent and do that with no consequences. That's practically effective, as you use those emotions on the other side to get closer to victory. It doesn't work too well with aftermatch stickers or emotes. Still, you may get this effect in a series of fights intensified. Do it, but don't fall into toxicity, please. Why no toxicity, you may ask? Being a good opponent is not only a thing for beginners when you don't want people to get bored playing with you. It's a good skill even if you win. In a way, toxicity is a heavy anchor that doesn't allow you to grow further. A player spreads their toxicity on beginners and then on opponents of the same level. And eventually, no one wants to be a sparring partner for them. Their own emotional experience is ruined and creating a smurf account to destroy newcomers doesn't feel like a bad idea. The energy flows not to self-improvement, and it may certainly lead to self-destruction. Should we give more examples of toxicity that goes beyond taunts and emojis? Let's discuss them here so that you may get prepared for facing them in your games. Teabagging has been around since the dawn of time. There's nothing too deep involved, just a lot of cockiness. And if you do it to a friend, teabagging may be fun, not to strangers though. Bringing your opponent to the verge of death and then avoiding any interaction, this is a level of profound evil toxicity. The poor guy desperately tries to catch you and deliver at least some damage, but then gets KO'd with no proper chance to survive. Do you want to make the victim cry or what? Some games give special tools to emphasize your disrespect. Sure, Mortal Kombat does that with the over the top, even for MK standards, brutalities. Well, this feels like not a bad thing for NRS games. Do you consider brutalities toxic? All toxicity has two sides, so don't be an easy victim. Develop your emotional resistance. Roanor Zoro did not feel very good after that loss, obviously, and it's not about his physical injury. Even when a winning opponent pays respect to your effort, it has the power to hurt emotionally. But Zoro took that as a reason to grow stronger. This is generally a very good approach. Any resistance is not an ultimate protection. Human emotions are shaky. We are not anime characters. But fighting games are a competitive genre. It's necessary to try and get prepared. Answering with the same toxicity is not really helpful as you throw wood in the fire of those emotions. Proudly laughing at the face of, let's say it, a bully, and I don't mean grapplers here. Yeah, that sounds like a good option. Playing decently is also important and prevents you from provoking toxicity. Any fight is worth doing your best, even if there are little chances to win. One and done is mainly not cool too. Use every chance to improve your skills and give that chance to the opponents. Quitting mid-match is even beyond toxicity. Being a decent opponent is an effective strategy to follow on the losing side. It is certainly interesting to check out what's going on with toxicity in the professional fighting game community. The options here go far beyond those taunts and teabagging, and the level of competition is significantly high, which includes so much stronger emotions. Not going to give names, but some players love bringing toxicity to the scene. Even losses may be turned into an excuse for emotional pressure. That does not feel a lot like the practical tool I mentioned earlier, for various reasons. It's hardly a true evil toxicity. The general atmosphere at tournaments is very friendly and supportive, both on the side of winning and losing. Do you remember how Sonic Fox congratulated Goichi after getting defeated at the grand final of EVO 2019? This was so heartful. The difference between pro level and online matchmaking is quite obvious. Internet trolls love to hide behind nicknames and play dirty. It's nice that fighting games limit their options. 
Do you like adding salt to your interactions with a player on the other side? Do you think toxicity exists in the FTC and can be a problem? Please share your opinions in the comments below. For me personally, getting a supportive thumbs up or a fun sticker at the end of any match makes me appreciate that opponent so much. I am grateful to them and I want to pay that back. What's your personal approach? Let us know and we'll see you in the next video.